Hello folks. Well look, the humidity in my house during the winter time was causing my floors to crack and, and dry skin and everything. As you can see here, with temperatures in the house, it was less than 6% less than relative humidity. I decided to buy a humidifier that matched my furnace brand. Well this thing arrived. It was a lot larger than I thought it was going to be. It, 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 took, it was going to require a big hole in the furnace duct in order to mount this thing. Just simply didn't have enough room in my supply duct to mount the thing. It also came with a template, but I measured the thing with my ruler. And then I looked at my furnace ducts and, and my water supply to figure out where I was going to mount this. Now, since it's a bypass humidifier, air can flow through this either direction. And what I decided to do was to mount the humidifier itself on the return plenum with a supply line into the supply plenum. Now, it's, it's extremely important, with, as with anything, that this thing be mounted level so that the water flow through it is adequate. Along with rulers and squares and things, here's a couple of the metal cutting tools and metal bending tools that I used to uh, do the installation. So again, here we go with the installation of the humidifier housing itself. Again, make sure everything is level with the humidifier. I marked the, the cutting lines on the return plenum with, with about one inch inside of each line so that I could bend these in and reinforce the mounting surface itself. I then, using my cutting tools, I cut out the hole in the plenum, then I cut the 45 degree angles, and using my bending tool, I bent all, all around where the humidifier was going to be mounted. As you can see, the seams are folded in, the top one's folded all the way over. Then I test fitted the actual humidifier case to the hole, made sure it would mount. The next thing I did was I installed my right elbow on the humidifier and marked where that thing hit the supply plenum. I used a fingered duct to tap into my supply plenum. Here's two pictures of that duct, one, one at 90 degree angles. And then I, I marked the diameter of the hole and cut a hole that size in the appropriate spot in the supply plenum. Noting the distance between both plenums, I cut a little piece of ductwork to install on, on, the, on the elbow so that the distance was right. Then I temporarily fit the things again and I marked where the angle pipe met the humidifier and then I took it apart and put screws into the case and made sure that the little damper inside the humidifier case would open and close with this elbow installed. That's the summer winter damper inside the humidifier case. Then I installed the case back onto the furnace with the finger joint in the supply plenum. Now to seal this whole setup, I used air duct sealer goop around the union between the finger joint and, and the plenum itself and this is what that looked like and then I finally sealed the whole thing with uh, tape. Here's the actual media pad itself with the water that drains through it. It just pops right into the humidifier. It slips out and then you, the hose simply slips into the top of that. Here's the completed installation of the humidifier on the return air plenum. Actual plumbing is the next step in this. I used quarter, quarter inch copper tubing, don't use plastic tubing, and a saddle valve that came with humidifier. I also kind of remounted some uh, the wiring on the solenoid valve like this. There's the routing of my quarter inch copper tubing. You can see the saddle valve. Here's a close up of the saddle valve. Turn the water on, make sure you don't get any drips anywhere. Here's a close up of the water connection into the solenoid valve that came with the humidifier with the wires hanging loose. The next thing I did was I did the drain hose. I just used half inch garden hose into my furnace drain, making sure there's air gap is still intact. The next stage is the electrical. What I wanted to do was to use my thermostat humidifier control to run the humidifier. So here's a picture of the board. Here's a picture of the humidifier and the common terminals where you draw the 24 volts AC when the thermostat calls for humidity. Then I ran high temp 105 degrees C wire from the furnace up the plenum and around to the humidifier solenoid valve itself. 
Here's a picture of the solenoid valve completed with some wire nuts, but let's don't put the wire nuts on just yet. Here's the other end of the wire, one terminal to the humidifier, the other terminal to the common. You can find out your specifications using your schematic on your furnace itself. So let's make sure this, that this thing's going to work properly. The first thing you need to do is to go up to your humidistat and turn it all the way up so you have 24 volts AC at the hum terminal and common. Here's the specifications of the valve, 24 volts, 2.2 watts. So first thing I do is I look across, I measure the voltage across the wires that go to this valve and I should see 24 volts, which I do. Now the humidifier has to be turned all the way up. The next thing I wanted to do was to make sure that my valve didn't draw too much current for the furnace. Now the furnace is rated at 500 milliamps, so putting this meter in series with those connections, I see that my valve is drawing 175 milliamps. Now I can turn the humidistat back down to a normal temperature and I determine, determine this by just trial and error. And I can find, we can flange up the valve, put the wire nuts on. So here's how I finalized my installation. Here's what the humidifier looks like installed. There's the return plenum. You can see the air going to the supply plenum and the sealant I used on the supply plenum. I also mounted the humidifier so that the name label was right side up. So, I, after several hours of trial and error, this is where I set the humidistat and we get a consistent 23 to 26% humidity in the house. Now remember, it was six, two to 6% six before. And we've got an outside temperature of 20, so I'm not going to get condensation on the windows or anything like that. So I marked all this critical information on the side of the humidifier case. Now, it was hard for me to tell when this humidifier was operating and when it wasn't operating. So what I did was I installed a small LED in parallel with the solenoid valve. The LED draws about 5 to 10 milliamps, so that's really no concern with the power supply out of the furnace. And here's the schematic I used to put that LED in series with it. Thank you much for looking at my videos. Be sure and visit our website.